go to Psalms 114. Let's talk about a few things that God wants us to say tonight, and then we're going to have a, have a season of prayer. I, I think it's me, Brother Chris. I'm just, for some reason, I'm, I'm bumping it, but I think we'll figure it out here before too long. My shirt's moving around. Amen. If it bothers y'all too much, just wave your hand at me, and I'll go to, I'll go to this mic. Got it figured out. It's every time I breathe. Okay, I'm not going to breathe for an hour. We'll put up with the crackle, amen? Yeah, that's what it is, every time I breathe. Praise the Lord. Psalms 114, verse number 1. I want to talk to us for just a few moments on the subject, when Israel went out of Egypt. When Israel went out of Egypt. Verse 1. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. The Jordan River was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like lambs. Verse 5 is where it gets very interesting. What ailed thee, O thou sea, that thou fleddest, or that you went back, or that you split? What ailed you, Jordan River, that you were driven back, and you began to flow the opposite way of you normally do, is what that's saying. Verse 6, you mountains, what ailed you when you skipped like rams, and you little hills like lambs? Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, which turned the rock into a standing water, the flint into a fountain of waters. Can I tell you the presence of God is power. When Israel went out of Egypt, when Israel went out of Egypt, when Israel was delivered out of the bondage of Pharaoh and that nation of Egypt, the power of God was demonstrated many, many times along their journey. You and I that know any history about this journey of the people of God, we also understand that there were times that they did not obey God and the power of God was not manifested in a way that they always wanted to. Rather, the judgment of God came on their lives. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 teaches us to grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. How many of you know that our lives should be lived in such a way that we do not grieve the Holy Spirit? And the reason is, is because God wants to manifest His power and His presence every single day of our life. Amen? He wants us to walk in His power and He wants us to walk in His presence. But yet when Israel went out of Egypt, this is a powerful statement in the fact that it also represents the time when they were freed from bondage. Can I submit to us tonight, when we were freed from the bondage of sin, we were people just like them that came out of Egypt. How many of you remember when you were set free from the bondage of sin? What a powerful time it was. Never forget that, friend. Never forget the time that you were saved and set free from the bondage of sin. And with that coming out, with that coming out of, if you will, the, uh, Egypt in our lives or that exodus, that mass exodus out of sin into the marvelous light, the escape of bondage, there is the presence of God that walks with us, that talks with us, that bonds with us, that provides for us, that manifests among us the very power of an almighty God. How many of you want to walk in the presence and power of God? Verse 2 tells us that Judah, this is the tribe of Judah, God's people was his sanctuary and Israel was his dominion. Now the, the people of Judah were his people, but also the place that, that, that God chose in his providential plan to set down his presence in Judah. How many of you understand that God doesn't just arbitrarily set his presence down anywhere? 
God's presence is set down where people are hungry for the presence and power of God. Where people are hungry, where people are thirsty for the power of God, that's where God sets his power and his presence down. In other words, Israel, the nation that God ruled, the nation that had his law, the nation that he, that they recognized him as king when they did that and when they submitted themselves fully to God, that's when the power and the presence of an almighty God showed itself, showed himself real, and things began to change that had not changed for a long period of time. What's this? The psalmist goes on to tell us what happened when God's people, where he set up tabernacle with them, and those that recognized him as king as they journeyed to their ultimate destination. Don't forget, friend, we've got an ultimate destination. Brother Marvin Pilcher met that destination Saturday. I'm telling you, the presence of God, when he took his last breath here, the presence of God was so real in that hospital room, nobody could deny what was taking place. He was being ushered into the presence of an almighty God. The Bible says that when the presence of God sat down in this psalm, watch this. The Bible says that the sea, the Red Sea, saw it. The Red Sea saw the presence of God and fled. The Jordan River was driven backwards. In other words, it, it, it's a swift river at times, and the waters heaped up and began to go backwards. A sea that had been, been there, the waves day after day after day had. In fact, the Red Sea was near even Egypt and Pharaoh's army and Pharaoh's kingdom couldn't bid back this sea. The power of Pharaoh and all of his army, they couldn't do anything with the sea because the sea would just, every day it would do the same thing over and over and over again. The waves would come and crash against the shore. The mountains saw it and skipped like rams, and the little hills saw it and skipped like little lambs. The mountains began to move when the presence of God was manifested. And then the question comes in verse number five, what ailed thee? What ailed thee, O thou sea? What thou that fleddest? What ailed the Jordan River, thou that was driven back? In other words, what happened to you that make you do something different than what you've been doing all this time? How many of you understand the presence and power of God to make you take a different direction than what you've done for so many years? Amen. In other words, what caused you to do something that you are not used to doing? <laughs> a young man that uh, was helping feed the football team, I won't call his name for just privacy, but he, he, I texted him, I said, hey, buddy, thank you for helping with the football team. He said, yeah, I went over and I began to talk to them. And he said, I'd never done this before. I was so nervous. How many of you know the power and the presence of God to help you do something that you're not used to? He said, I loved it. What caused you to act in a way that for years upon years you've not changed? This sea, the Red Sea, had not changed. I'll submit to you tonight, it was not the mere fact that the sea rolled back, the river rolled back, the mountains skipped, and the hills leaped just because these people came to it, not just because they approached it. The sea did not roll back. The, the, the river did not flow backwards. The, the hills did not begin to skip like lambs and rams just because they walked up to it. But I will submit to you that it was when God's people with God's presence came to the edge of these places that caused them to do what they normally did not do. Amen? God's people... Save people, we can walk up to something, but we need the presence and power of God to make it do something that it not, doesn't normally do. How many of you understand that the power and the presence of God has the ability to make people change and be different? How many of you are different than you was a year ago? Raise your hand. How about uh, 10 years ago? How about 30 years ago? How about 60 years ago? Great God, have mercy. Mm. 
We got any 80 years ago in here? I bet in those 80 years, you ain't never put two belts on. <laughs> that wasn't the presence of God that made me put two belts on. That was called tired. That was, that's what that was. But notice verse number seven with me, if you will, tonight. Notice verse number seven. Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. I want you to understand it's God's presence and God's power within his presence that causes a situation in our lives to reverse its course, to pile back from the direction it's going. We pray and we believe with everything in us. And when we do that, we give the power and the presence of God an opportunity to reverse something that we need changed. We have children that need the power and presence of God, and the only thing that's going to change their direction is his power and his presence. We've begged, we've, we've, we've cried, we've, we've, we've fussed, we've, we, we've, we've done all of that, and all of that has its place, but nothing can change them or change the situation in your life like the power and the presence of an almighty God. Nothing can do that. Amen? The Red Sea for years had rolled wave after wave into that shore until one day when God's people showed up with God's presence and it had to do something different. When the presence of God showed up to that sea, it had to do something different. For years, that Jordan River flowed one way until one day the people of God showed up with the presence of God and it stood still and ceased to flow in the direction that it had been flowing. It had never done that before, not one time. And this particular time, when God's people with the presence of God showed up, it flowed a different direction. Hell don't want what to go out of here tonight. But it ain't going to win. We're about to change directions on it. Amen? What are you trying to tell me tonight, Brother Bill? The presence of God among God's people has the power to reverse the situation in our lives and cause things that are going one way to stop to cease to be removed out of the way so that we can go where we are destined to go. This presence of God in the midst of God's people, it'll cause a rock to become a pool of water and the flint to become a fountain of waters. God's presence can do the miraculous, friend. What we're seeing happen in this church, what we're seeing happening in the lives of people in this church and in this community what we're seeing as the, 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 the wind of the Spirit is blowing through here, it's not because we sit in the same place every Sunday. It's not because we drive the same direction every Sunday. It's because the power and the presence of God is changing things in people's life. But watch this. Let us not forget. Let us not forget what causes the power of God and the presence of God to rest in the midst of God's people it just doesn't arbitrarily happen. It doesn't just, we just don't show up and God says, okay, they showed up, so poof. There's something that takes place that ushers in the power and the presence of God. There's something that takes place and that is the very power of of prayer. Prayer escorts the presence and power of God into a place. Sunday morning, our women's Sunday school group, my wife shared with me what the Lord had laid on her heart to do in women's Sunday school that morning. She shared a little bit, and then those ladies went into a season of prayer. And they prayed the entire time of the Sunday school. There were people that were praying that had called me that morning, says, Brother Bill, we can't make it, but we are interceding for the service today. 
in my office before I came out, I prayed. Here was my prayer. You ready for an eloquent prayer that I prayed before Sunday morning? Here was my prayer. God, help me get out of the way and help your presence get in, in somebody's life. That was my prayer. Help me get out of the way and help your presence, your presence get in somebody's life. And prayer escorted the power and the presence of God in this place. And people flooded this altar and lives were forever changed. Why? Because the presence and power of God reverses direction when it sets down among its people. Amen? Never forget the power of prayer. Moses prayed for God's people to be delivered and they were. Moses prayed for God to move as the people of God stood still and witnessed the salvation of the Lord. And God did. God separated the sea. Prayer to God was offered before they crossed the Jordan River. Let me remind us of something tonight, friend. We can never, ever, ever lose the sight of the power of prayer. We must be people of prayer. Amen. We gotta be people of prayer. Why are you so why are you, why are you so loud about this? And I, I'm telling you, when God's people stop praying, friend, it's a dangerous place to get into. Notice what the Bible says in verse number seven: Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Tremble thou earth means that when the power of God is revealed in the midst of his people. Brought about by the power of prayer, earth itself will take notice of what's going on. There's something supernatural happens when the power and presence of God sets down. And if the earth itself will take notice of this power, what makes us think in this building tonight that the enemy of our soul does not take notice when the power and presence of God is among his people? He has to reverse and back up when the power and presence of God is there. He cannot stop what God wants to do when his presence is in the midst of people. He takes notice, and you know what he says? I believe he says this. I, I don't know this, but I, it's what I like to think. Them people know what it is to be in the presence and power of God. Them people know how to pray. The enemy's more scared of prayer than he is just about anything else because he knows prayer is going to escort the power and the presence of God into a place. Do you understand why the enemy tries to keep us so busy? You understand why he tries to keep us so tired? He doesn't want us to stop and pray. He doesn't want us to stop and pray. Well, we got to pray for three hours for God to move. No, you can pray for three seconds and, and heaven can set down in a place. Amen? It's the obedience of stopping and praying. It's not the eloquence of your prayer. It's the obedience of praying to God that who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that we may ask or think. The power of prayer escorts the presence of God into a place. And when the presence of God is into a place, it changes people. It reverses direction in people's lives. It's simple, but it's powerful. We must be people of prayer. Tonight, we're going to spend just a few moments in prayer. And I really believe that the Lord has instructed me to do this. Situations in people's lives in this building can stop and take a different direction by one act of obedience for us to pray. Amen? I believe in this house tonight that disease can stop and take a different direction and leave somebody's body. I believe that tonight. I believe lost children that don't even, are not even here in this service tonight, lost grandchildren that are not even here in this service tonight, don't even know what we're talking about or what we're doing here tonight, the power and presence of God to get, can go where they are and reverse the situation in their life. I believe families that are struggling, I believe marriages that are struggling can be reversed tonight by one act of obedience of prayer. That's why we pray. I said that's why we pray, and that is to escort the power of God into a place so that lives can be changed. How many of you would be honest with this preacher tonight? There's a situation in your life Maybe your family's life, maybe your personal life. You don't have to call it. You don't have to name it. Nobody's going to ask you what it is. That you need it to stop and you need it to reverse. Lift your hand in this place. Wow. 
Wow. I want you to stand across the house of the Lord. Donna, come to the piano, if you will. Listen, here's what I want you to do. We're going to move from where we are. We're going to come to an altar tonight. And I want you to begin to pray. And I want us to be led of the Holy Spirit. This is not an opportunity for us to be seen. This is an opportunity for God's power and God's presence to be manifested among us. And if he wants to do that in his way or how he wants to do it, that's how we get to do it tonight. But I want every person to move out from where they are and find them a place of prayer and just begin to spend some time praying with God in this building. Come on, you can go ahead and start moving now. Every person, you can sit up here if you want to. If you want to come up here in a chair and sit in one of these comfortable chairs, you can. Don't be uncomfortable, but I do want you to move from where you are. There's something about the obedience of moving. And I want you to just begin to pray. God, the only way it's going to change directions is if your power and your presence comes and touches it. It's as big as the Red Sea, but you can split it, Lord. It's as swift as the Jordan River, but you can stop it and make it flow the other way. Hallelujah. 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 God, you can stop it, Lord. You can reverse it, God. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope you enjoyed the sermon. We'd love to see you in person. We're at 2062 River Road in Sneeds, Florida, 32460. On Sundays, our Sunday school begins at 9 a.m., and our Sunday morning service begins at 10 a.m. Hope to see you soon.